I was gifted with more strawberries. Martin's friend at his workplace gave us some more strawberries. I am so excited. And I got them all planted. Now I did water them. They look kind of nasty right now. But uh, they've been watered. And uh, I think they'll come out of it all right. They're in a good good soil. Mixture of horse manure and, and good rich compost. This is... Uh, this is some more of the same thing. And uh, this one, I didn't have to water because it was already really wet. And I'll be watching this so that it maintains some moisture. And this is last year's. And you can see that this one here is uh, actually doing pretty good. It's All of the strawberries look like they're growing. And I'm looking forward to some berries. Oh, yes. Turned out to be a pretty nice day. I got a lot of work done today. And I'll show you just what I did. Now, there's quite a bit of wind out here, and I apologize for that. I'm trying to block it. Don't think it's going to work. Quite a bit of wind. But I just wanted to show you that uh, I've kind of caught up on some of the work out here I rototilled this uh, this section of the yard it's the lower section below the apple trees and uh, you know the rest of the lawn is quite a bit higher and so uh, you can see I planted planted some apple trees right along the crest of that uh, hill that little drop off and this I want to plant another row of blackberries so I'm going to take these blackberries and transplant some of them in to a row here then today I did some rototilling on this side also and then there's a section that I have not rototilled yet uh, I have uh, used the burner and uh, weed burner and uh, burned a bunch of weeds a bunch of paper and I got it all burned up real nice. And uh, so I've got to do some more tilling here. But um, I did rotor till the rest of this garden. And uh, that white stuff right there is some uh, masa. It's a uh, flower that uh, was getting uh, too old. It had a horrible taste, so it was uh, it was something something that was given to us as a gift. We stored it till we could get to it, and when we got to it, we didn't like it. So it's in our garden now. Uh, best way to get rid of weeds temporarily is to uh, sear and burn the soil. Uh, man has been doing that for a long, long time. Good news is. Uh, I got a lot of work done, <laughs> and uh, this, I wanted to show you these weeds here, if I could find some, yeah, right here, okay, right down here, these little bitty, you can see a yellow flower on them, and those weeds, uh, my understanding, they've come in from Oregon. Well, we're not that far from Morgan, so, you know, we can blame it on them, I guess. But it doesn't matter where it comes from. It's here now to stay. And uh, they are a noxious weed, and they spread real bad. And so uh, I did do spraying. I bought a new sprayer, and I did some spraying on those. I don't know that it's really knocking them yet. It's supposed to, supposed to have a pretty good effect within a day or two. And uh, I'll wait till tomorrow, and if it doesn't do its job, then Monday I'm going to have to get me some power, more powerful spray. Here's some uh, spray. Here's some weeds here. Here's some, uh, some noxious weed as well. This stuff spreads, and when it gets a root down, oh my God, it could be two, three feet deep really bad stuff and I've got to get that sprayed 
I did do some spraying on it, but I'll have to hit it again. Yeah, I picked up. I did a lot of pickup. Now well, there's more to pick up, but it does look a whole lot better. And uh, now I can rotor tail over in that corner. Rotor tail all that up, level it out. Actually use it as part of the garden instead of a weed patch. Haven't put anything else in the raised bed. Uh, I do have some things that I can put in there. But the weather's been so doggone cold at night. We just, you know, the other night, like two nights ago, we had a 27 degrees. And when you're that low, you know, you want to be cautious on putting things out unless you've got a some sort of a cover over it. And I don't have anything built for this. So I'm being cautious. I'm, t I'm checking the temperature of the dirt to see if if uh, if it's warm enough to put plants in there, I did plant. I did turn this over. Uh, gar grass was coming up big time in here. Uh, grass is well. You can see. I'm going to have to get my shovel and start doing some digging. What I do is I uh, I flood flood it, get it really soft and muddy. I mean, just muddy, muddy, muddy. And then uh, I'll use my shovel. And uh, just, you know, dig that out and pull it out of there. And I uh, haven't done it for years, and uh, I got way behind, so i got lots to catch up on. Yeah, this, this part of the garden looks pretty good. And eventually, like I say, I'll come up about, about the middle, about here. And uh, I'll go ahead and put the uh, another line of blackberries and uh, I think that'll be nice. Two rows of blackberries, two rows of raspberries, two rows of grapes. Uh, hopefully I can put in a whole bunch of good blueberries. I want to move the blueberries that's in my box. So things are looking pretty good right now. If I'm lucky, you know how that goes. This is an uh, apple tree. And uh, don't know if it's going to get bit or not. I sure hope not. Would be nice to get some apples. I trimmed this tree up really good, so I know we're not going to be swamped with apples because I've cut so much off, but. That's the whole object of it is the apples that you get should be really nice apples instead of having a tree full of apples that you can't eat because they're too buggy. All right, enough of this. I'll let you go. Oh, my... All my apple trees, that's a plum tree, the white one over there, yellow plum. And, yeah, these trees, so far, look real nice. Sure hope I get some. Someone gives you a box of apples and they say, you know, if they're no good, just give them to your chickens. They got spots. They got bruises. Sores. What do you do? The question is, someone gives you some apples, you look at them, and they look like this. And they say, if you don't want them, give them to your chickens. What do you do? Okay. Someone gives you some celery. And 
and they say, if you don't want it, you can give it to your chickens. What do you do? You received a bunch of celery and you have to decide does it go to the chickens? What do you do? This is a Cabela dehydrator and uh, I ordered the uh, the sheets that are on it added it to it it's hard to see because <laughs> yeah there you go you can see it a little easier anyhow what we're going to do is we're dehydrating the gifts that we've received of course the apples I have to cut up and get some good out of it and my wife Ann says uh, she's going to make some goodies, you know. And the celery is going to go into this dehydrator here. Now I have another dehydrator in my little greenhouse out back. And it's doing the cilantro. We also received a couple of uh, bunches of uh, cilantro. So um, I cut it up and we're drying it and we'll have some nice dry dehydrated goodies when you get a gift like that you have to decide is it more important to give it to the chickens or or cut it up and dehydrate it yourself if you don't have an electric dehydrator like this then you should be building yourself a solar dehydrator and if you want to know what they look like then check out my videos on sand hollow homestead there is a video that we put out years ago on Barton's uh, solar dehydrator. And we do have to do a bunch of repairs on it. Um, it's the, w the weather has just destroyed that OSB board. So uh, we'll put some new boards on it and it'll be good for another five years, maybe. So anyhow, uh, this is just a little tip that uh, you know, I wanted to pass on that uh, if you get your hands on some food, you, know, you have to make a decision. Now, this is the decision we made. What would you do? Well, from San Hollow Homestead, there's lots of food in the pantry. We'll see you at supper time.